Hello, I'm Olive Barrows. And I'm Davis Ayega. Welcome to the special Friday edition of New Short, where we bring you a roundup of the week's biggest stories. And we start on a sad note. Baringo South Member of Parliament, Grace Kipchoim, is dead. Kipchoim passed on at the Nairobi Hospital after a long illness. The MP who was serving her second term in the National Assembly has been ailing since 2014 from cancer. Moving on, the implosion at the Independent Electron Boundaries Commission has dominated the headlines this week following the resignation of three commissioners on Monday. Vice Chairperson Katha Maina and Commissioners Margaret Mochanya and Paul Kurget resigned citing a lack of confidence in the chairman of Fuller Chibukati after he sent CEO Ezra Chiloba on compulsory leave. Chebukati has however made it clear that he has no intention of resigning despite calls for the complete reconstitution of the commission and secretariat from the opposition and ruling party. His state allocated security detail was however withdrawn on Tuesday morning, a day before he was scheduled to appear before the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of the National Assembly to explain the cause of the rift at the commission. President Uhuru Kenyatta's visit to the United Kingdom culminates with the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, which the Queen opened on Thursday. Queen Elizabeth, who turns 92 on Saturday, welcomes leaders from 53 Commonwealth nations of mostly former colonies to Buckingham Palace for two days of talks that will include discussions on trade, marine protection and tackling cybercrime. President Kenyatta has also secured an invitation to the G7 summit on the books for June in Quebec from Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. In his time in the United Kingdom, President Kenyatta has delivered a speech at the famed Chatham House on modern democracy. He has visited the London Stock Exchange and met with the Duke of Cambridge, Prince William. On Sunday, Kenya's second liberation hero, Kenneth Matiba, lost a long battle with cancer just hours after South Africa's laid another symbol of freedom on the continent, Mama Winnie Mandela, to rest. It's not yet known when Matiba will be laid to rest, but there will be two public funeral services that will be held in Nairobi and Muranga on Wednesday and Thursday next week. Matiba has been celebrated for his great sacrifice in the struggle for multipartism, with the government receiving some criticism for failing to make good on a court awarded settlement of over 900 million shillings for his suffering. Matiba was a well healed member of the business class in the 80s before he was detained and tortured under retired President Daniel Arab Moy's regime. A South African minister had forewarned that Winnie Mandela's final rights would be, and I quote, chaotic, in keeping with her character. And Julius Malema of the Economic Freedom Fighters did not disappoint, asking Mama from the great beyond to send a signal of what should be done about the pretenders in the mist. Mama, you never told me how we must treat them when they come here. I'm waiting for a signal, Ma. Pretenders whom he accused of deserting her when she was convicted for the kidnapping and assault of a 14-year-old accused of being an informer at the height of the apartheid struggle and murdered by her bodyguards in 1989. Not once to be left behind, Kenyans on Twitter picked up and rained with a give us a signal mama plea and causing the Julius Malema challenge hashtag to trend. Ma, ma, I'm waiting for a signal on how we should treat them. A very interesting speech indeed from Malema and Olive. I think I have to ask you this. What's your Malema challenge? Well, I'm still waiting for a signal from Mama. But if you don't want to miss that signal, make sure you subscribe to our Capital FM News YouTube channel. I'm Olive Barrows. And I'm Davis Ayega. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching.